Hello, this is Sanded here, back with another Mighty Morphin Power Rangers review. Today we'll finally be taking a look at the Legacy Dragon Zord. Alright, so here we have the packaging for the Legacy Dragon Zord, and I apologize for the stuff here and over there um, because well this box is huge now this box for the packaging for the Dragon Zord is modeled slightly out for the original packaging but more so for the new Legacy Megazord packaging as the original Dragon Zord did come with a Green Ranger action figure um, those are sold separately now so yeah there's that yeah, you know armored might stuff if you want but, that being said, the packaging is really nice. you got this nice image of the Dragon Zord here. It's got an 11-inch articulated tail, uh, metallic paint die-cast parts, standard for the Legacy line. On the side, you have the story, which we should all know, but if not, I'll let you pause it and read it. On the bottom, you got the six Ranger helmets uh, there. The Secret of the Power Zord is up here. Actually, bring that in just a little closer, and you can pause the video and read that if you'd like. And the Dragon Zord sets. It's 124 feet tall, it's 203 feet in length, 340,000 pounds, and it's 86 miles per hour with a weapon of a power laser drill. And on the back, you can see all the functions and its combined uh, modes with the Legacy Dino Megazord, which I previously reviewed. You also get a really cool image on the top of the box of the Dragon Zord and the Green Ranger. And this is recommended for ages 15 plus. Now what's really cool is that it is the exact same size as the box of the Legacy Megazord. So these two can sit next to each other quite nicely. So mint and box collectors, or box collectors like me, um, who like having packaging on display sometimes, uh, this does provide a nice backdrop for the two Megazords. And the boxes are the exact same size. Um, so you never know, we, we may see a re-release of the Legacy Megazord shipping in Dragon Zord cases uh, when Titanus comes around because they would all fit in the same box. So really cool how, how the boxes match so well. So without further ado, it's, it, it, it's time to move along. Um, and it's, it's, it's time to summon the Dragon Zord. So the Dragon Zord does come a little bit disassembled when you first get it out of the box, much like this, except without this tail tip attached. But other than that, it's pretty disassembled when you first get it. So there is some assembly required, but if anyone knows the anatomy of the Dragon Zord, then you're good to go. So uh, let's just move right along here and... Alright, so here is the Legacy Dragon Zord in its Dragon Zord mode, all complete. And oh my gosh, does this thing look really cool. Now, with the Legacy Megazord, we had already gotten the 2010 uh, Power Rangers Megazord release. Which was good, but, you know, the Legacy Megas were so much better, as I detailed in my review of it uh, all those months ago, back in November. And so the Dragon Zord, though, did not have a 2010 counterpart, so this is an entirely new figure for the Legacy line, which is super cool. First of all, taking a look at the Dragon Zord, this is it configured how you basically see it most of the time. Um... Now, the detail work on this is so much better. In stating this right off the bat, this is an $80 uh, at, at Toys R Us, $80 at Big Bad Toy Store, $80 uh, retail priced uh, toy. This is the same price as the Dragon Dagger. And people were wondering, well, why is this more? Because the Megaz Legacy Megazord retailed for 70 and that's five Zords, and this is just one that doesn't do any transformation on its own. Yada, yada. Entirely new mold. And no stickers whatsoever. The Legacy Megazord had quite a bit of stickers. All of this is molded and painted detail. Um, and it is glorious. As you can see, he's got red reflective eyes. Uh, they used a metallic silver and gold paint. It looks really nice and shimmers under the light. Um, his hands, every one of his fingers are painted inside with the little black spots. Like the missiles. The fin up here is painted well, nice and well. Um, the 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 logos and such are accurate to the original Japanese toy and the show model, so they are perfect. You even got the Z's on the bottom of his feet, exactly how they should be. 
No lightning bolts anywhere on this guy. The detail in the molding is absolutely perfect. The paint all along and down the tail. Everything is painted pretty much except for the black plastic. Uh, everything else is painted. And it just looks just incredible. Uh, also, the weight on this guy is significant. Like all Legacy items, there is die cast. Uh, namely, the die cast in the uh, feet here mostly. I think, thought there were some die cast in his legs, but maybe it should be plastic here. But the feet are die cast. Uh, the chest piece, this gold section in the center, is die cast. These gold arm pieces are all die cast. Um, I believe there's some parts of some other parts of the, the torso piece that are that are die cast. There's no die cast in his tail, uh, but we'll get to why that's impressive in a little bit. Uh, and overall, it's just he's quite hefty. Um, and yo, know, these pieces here, these silver pieces that are his, his crotch piece and his tail connection are die cast as well. So lifting this guy, he is he is heavy. I think he's actually heavier than Legacy Megazord uh, overall, but he is quite hefty. Um, so you do feel like you're paying for an impressive uh, piece of, of plastic and metal composition. Now getting into the really cool things about the Mega, uh, about the Dragonzord itself here. Um, first of all, the hands. Now the hands were a bit of contention because one prototype we saw had these curled fingers and one prototype we saw had the straight fingers like we usually think. And these hands actually don't fit inside the arms like it should. And that mystery was solved when Bandai UK posted the contents and there was alternate hands. So you do get separate hands that just swap on and off on a simple peg. And so you can have the missile shooting hands slash original Dragonzord hands that fit up into the arms that become shoulder cannons for the Mega Dragonzord. And, you know, that's all nice and good. But, you know, it just looks a little awkward with his hands this way. I always never liked it, because in the show, he'd only use this when he was firing the missiles. So if you want missile firing Dragonzord all the time, you're, you're set. But to give it the more show-accurate look that they were going for, and when you're building a toy from the ground up, um, then why not go as show-accurate as possible uh, when you're not using an existing mold from anything? And they really did knock it out of the park with these alternate hands. They just give the Dragon's Orb more character, he looks less stiff, and more like the show counterpart. Which, show accuracy is what we're going for here. And it is quite astounding, um, just how accurate this guy is. And that goes down to his articulation as well. Now, let's say, let, let's be honest, Megazords are not known for articulation, or alternate hands, this is the first, I've never seen alternate hands on, a, on any kind of Megazord or Zord uh, in the past. But articulation-wise, this guy actually has much more than I ever thought he would. Um, first of all, his mouth opens. Uh, you can see it opens up, but unfortunately you do see there's a face in his mouth, uh, but not really anything you avoid. Most angles, it just kind of looks like a tongue. Uh, but his mouth does open. His eyes drop, too, which is a little weird, but we'll get into why in a little bit. His wrists do rotate, so he can move his hands. Uh, his, his wrists do pivot, and his arms move up and down that much. Plus, if you unpeg his arms from the side of his body, there's enough joints so you can have his arm go out. And there is a rotation here. For whatever purpose, I think it's just so you can have him waving his arms up in the air. Um, kind of like that, which just looks silly, but it's kind of fun. Um, the suit actor himself in the show, in the original Sentai counterpart too, probably did only had about that much arm articulation. Um, maybe a little more restricted even. So it's really cool that they kind of give you this this possibility. He's kind of going like, hey, I'm the Dragon Zord. He just wants to hug people, it looks like. Um, but you do have this articulation. If you want to make it a little bit more show accurate, closer to the body, it is possible. Um, but they do give you some wiggle room with the arms to, to kind of mess around with. And I do like that. Those extra joints right there just make it really, really cool. Um, but, you know, it's the most show accurate sitting there. I also like how the wrist can turn to give them a little bit more relaxed pose. Like he's just stomping around, he's not fighting all the time. The legs can ratchet forward slightly, uh, not too far back. His knees also can slide in, and his ankle has a pivot that is only for Dragon's articulation. So you can kind of have him in, in stomping poses um, where he is stomping down and, and falling over. Um, you can also have him sit like that. That's just kind of funny. But I'm actually really impressed with all the articulation that he has, and it helps him to be a standalone figure 
without the Megazord combinations, more so than the original could ever be. Uh, also, ankle tilts. Awesome. And then we get to the most articulation on the whole figure. So let's turn them down like that. Uh, and that is the tail. The tail is about 11 inches long, like it said on the packaging. It rotates here. There is a ball joint here, a ball joint here, a ball joint here, a ball joint here, and a ball joint at the tip. He's basically got a tail that's as articulated as SH Monster Arts Godzilla. So you can have him posed where he's going to drill a building. You can have his... You have his pose where he kind of like lays down or bends over a little bit and just starts destroying things with the tail. Um, and you do have that option of him spinning like this, which works really well. And especially when you get like the wavy arms going, he's just like a party dragon sword. It's really kind of fun, like all the possibilities of posing for what is a zord. And zords just don't have this much articulation like ever. Um, because of all the transformation that involves uh, joints that they can't use, basically. Um, you know, the most arm articulation we've gotten on a Megazord was from the Zeo Megazord, just because of its design and articulation. So overall, the Dragon Zord on his own, without having any, any combination functionality, on his own, the Legacy Dragon Zord is quite fantastic for the amount of articulation he has. Um, the tail is quite impressive, the weight... The heft and all the arm articulation, so you can do wacky poses. So, this is where I, I, I take the point in the video where if you don't own the Legacy Megazord or the 2010 Megazord, and you're thinking about just getting the Dragon Zord, I'd say go for it. If you like the Dragon Zord, um, if you're a fan of the Green Ranger, remember the Dragon Zord from, much, from your childhood. Uh, if you don't have an original Dragon Zord, or even if you do, um, we'll get in that in a minute. But, I gotta say, I would, I would high, highly recommend. The, the Legacy Dragon Sword, on his own, he is a solid figure. Um, he's got as much articulation that you'd ever need. Um, you can't really ask for more from this guy because of the transformation pieces, but on his own, he is worth $80. From the care and craftsmanship that was put into it and the amount of paint and die-cast work, I will say that he is worth his cost. Now, that being said, we have other things to get to. First of all, First of all, we're going to bring in the 21-year-old original Dragon Zord for comparison. This is the toy that was treasured by many that I bought for 10 bucks because he's so incomplete. Um, and he goes for so much more than this guy will go for at Toys R Us and Big Bad Toy Store. Um, it's just, when you look at this, and you look at, at how 20 years of engineering has changed a toy. This guy looks fat. The original Dragon Sword is now the fat Dragon Sword. Mostly because of the LED uh, light, these little things light up when you have batteries in it or if electronics work. These don't light up. But that one change slimmed him down so much. The hands just make it look more natural. And overall, it just looks so much better and so much more accurate than this guy here. You can see the eyes on this Dragon Sword. The Dragon Sword's eyes are hidden away. His mouth doesn't even close, it's stuck open. And the only, only design thing that I do like about this one over this one is that it combines with the Mega Zord a little easier with the Mega Dragon Sword combination. And that's pretty much it. There's there's nothing else really to be had here. Um, and even looking at the tail, I don't have the tip of the tail. It, it broke off on this one. But just this one has got such a bigger tail. And really, for what was a cherished collector's item among the Power Rangers fandom for many years, and may still be for, for, for many people who had it as a child, um, the original Dragon Sword just is, is not good anymore. It was good enough for what we had, but he's been updated. The Legacy Dragon Zord is miles better than the original. And so that being said, is the Legacy Dragon Zord a cool toy? Yes. You know what makes it better? It's combination with the Legacy Megazord, which we have here. And what's really cool is that even though they couldn't keep the scaling from the show exactly, it's got the scaling of the original toys. So, 
What does that mean for the good old dragon sword here? Well, none other than we need to combine these swords. Before we get to the transformation of the dragon sword, let's begin with the mega sword. First thing you want to do is remove his legs, uh, the Triceratops Dinozord here, and the Sabertooth Tiger Dinozord will need to go off to the side um, for combination. Also, you need to remove, pop the tail off, unpeg the arms here, and remove this whole back section with Mastodon. Uh, keep the guns there. Um, that seems to be the official way of doing it. And then you are left with a chest piece and a torso that have nothing to do, so we're just going to put them to the side for now. Alright, to get the dragon sword ready, it's a little bit more involved. First off, you do want to swap the hands um, as the curled fingers will not fit uh, for transformation. So we will need to put the curled hands away for now. And for the moment, you want to make sure that those hands are in place and take these hands and put them off to the side. Alright, next you want to remove the tail. Now this connection is very tight to Zord Builder Port 2 which is fun. You want to close up each section of the tail. They do slide together and lock into place very nicely. So then you have this little drill piece. Next you want to take the Dragon Zord and you want to split them in half. He just pops apart and remove this chest piece. and Close them back together like that. Chest piece here, which is newly designed. You want to open it up here, take the tail, and it's going to peg right into that Zord Builder port in the middle, like that. And you want to take this stand piece that is included and plug it under the bottom of the Dragon Zord, or the Dragon Zord chest piece. Lastly, you want to open up this panel in the back here and fold out this little handle. And now you got the weapon ready to go, which we'll put off to the side. Back to the Dragon Zord. Each arm folds in like this and like this. And you want to take the two side panels, snap them together in the middle here. And then, while we're here, let's get the head ready. You want to pull the top fin up. It's going to drop the face down. Um, you'll notice the Dragon Zord's eyes disappear. Now you got the face for the battle mode. And now we get to some differences. Straighten up the legs. Um, this is different from the original. You would have one panel in the original. This has two. Um, so you open two panels up, slide the legs up, and just kind of rest the panels up against there. Um, so you open up both panels, bring this down, and you got to really slide these legs in to get them to lock. They they, they don't want to stay sometimes. But there you go, there's your Dragon's or Torso piece. Which we need to move the camera a little bit. So here we have the legs in place here. Now before we connect everything, you want to take the Dragon's Zord uh, as the torso, bring the Mastodon back in, peg the arms into place. Come around here, there's a little tab that will come out. And it will click into place into the little hole on the back of the Megazord. And then you want to attach the two legs here and here, bring up the arms, bring in his drill, put the hand in the handle, and now you got the Dragon Zord in warrior or battle mode. So here we have the Dragon Zord in fighting mode, which, wow, that was a lot that just happened to get to this point. Um, you will notice with the combinations of this Dragon Zord, even more so than the original, um, the combination process is intense. There's a lot of stuff going on. First off, let's talk about his drill. Because his drill goes all the way up there. It's so much taller than him. This is where the, the, the combination part of this Legacy Dragon Sword is where some things start to fall apart just a little bit. And the first off is that we have that giant tail. That great articulated tail is gigantic, and there is no way to remove any of these pieces to make it shorter. Uh, it is that tall. So he physically cannot wield this weapon. Um, that being said, uh, new stand piece. The stand piece, they still haven't figured out how to engineer this, um, but it's a classic design to, to stand this thing. And really, without this, this, this guy wouldn't stand a chance holding it. Um, also, a new addition is that this cod piece, which always fell off in the original because it just barely hung on, is actually hinged, so you can tuck it away, which I prefer to do because that's just weird. Let's just put that back there. Um, but yeah, the biggest complaint I have with this mode is this giant weapon. And so we are going to pull it away. Uh, I like how the handle is built in this time. 
So we don't have to deal with that stupid handle piece that always fell off on the original. Um, so let's move that aside. And now we can take a look at the combination. And that's the thing. If you start dragging this guy, his legs are going to come with it. Because holy crap is this thing heavy. You've con they've condensed all the weight of the Dragon Zord, added the really heavy arms and these tail pieces. So you just got this really massive heavy thing that yeah, I'm sure if you lifted it enough, you'd start gaining muscle on your arms. Um, it's that heavy. But, that being said, uh, it's really cool looking. Uh, the gold Z's with the green background uh, that is part of the original design is there, and it looks so much better than the lightning bolt look. Um, and he is quite tall. He is taller than the the, the Legacy Megazord would be on its own, because here's the 2010 Megazord. Um, they end up being just a little taller. A little taller. Uh, and this giant fin up here as well um, it is part of that. But, yeah, you can kind of see the, the height difference here with with the, the Megazord versus the Dragons are in fighting mode. Um, which leads to another question people had, and that is a question I'm going to answer. Uh, and that is, can you put the Dragon Zord in fighting mode on the 2010 Megazord, the all-plastic one? Well, let's find out. So, yeah, here is the 2010 Megazord limbs on the Legacy Dragon Zord. And it works. Um, this is an issue with both combinations, really. Uh, if you shake him too much, his, his legs come untapped. And I will say that with the plastic limbs, it does make this thing a lot lighter, which does help. Uh, to not imprint things into your foam board. Um, but, it just doesn't look as nice. Uh, the updated sticker design and the extra metallic sheen that's been added to the Legacy Zords does make it look nicer. But, if you do have only the 2010 Megazord, never got the Legacy Megazord, and you want to get the Legacy Dragon Zord to go with it, there you go. It works well. It's good. I'm going to revert this back to the Legacy, Dra uh, the, Legacy the full Legacy Dragon Zord fighting mode. Now we're back with the all legacy Dragon Zord. And moving him aside, let's bring in the original Dragon Zord in fighting mode. Man, is this an improvement! Um, first of all, let's get the pros out of the way of the original. Uh, I liked how the tails fit these spaces of the Dragon Zord. But other than that, this one looks so much sleeker, so much slimmer. A lot more like the show. This one looks bulkier, bigger, blockier. Not as much like the show. Can't compare the drill things too well because I don't have the stand or the tip or the handle, so you can't hold it. But I will say the original had a more proportional drill that you could actually physically use. Um, the Legacy version does have the massive drill of, of death that is impossible for him to wield just based on its size, um, but but this one had one that was a little bit better proportioned. That being said, this one required a stupid handle piece, and yeah, the handle piece was dumb. I'm glad I don't have it, cause it's so dumb. Anyways, moving that aside, have we done enough comparisons in this review yet? No, because we aren't done. Let's move on to the Dragon Zord and Megazord combination known as the Mega Dragon Zord. And now, this is when things get complicated. Uh, this is the combination that caused scratched paint on the horn of my Legacy Megazord. That being said, I am fearless, and I will show you this proper combination. And this is the Mega Dragon Zord. Let's begin with the Megazord. First of all, you need to fold the shoulder pads down that far. I'm going to fold the horns back. I'm going to untab the tail from back here. Bring it down. And you want to remove the chest piece and open up the chest flap. So we'll keep that all around. Bring that back a little bit. And now for the Dragon Zord, which I've left in its torso mode just for consistency's sake. So you want to open the torso back up. Click these arms into place. Make sure his hands are all lined up. Split them in half. And fold this little tab away. Nice touch, Bandai. And now is where it gets really complicated. Easy part, close up his mouth, and then bring the horn back. Um, actually, you can bring, you can actually leave the horn up like that. 
And now this is where it gets really, really kind of complicated. First of all, this guy is super heavy. Second of all, you got so many things that have to line up perfectly, it's going to be hard to do. So what I'm going to do to make this simpler on myself, because these are the largest chunks here, the legs do cop come off because they are on unsorbed builder ports. I'm going to remove them so that I can properly show this. So let's bring the Megazord in closer. Let's, let's get all intimate here. Move the camera up a little bit where it can't fall. So how this is going to work is that there's going to be tabs that are going to clip here, clip here, clip here, and then there's a whole system of tabs back here. All right, so the first step we need to do is take the Dragon Zord, make sure it's all lined up, and we're going to drape it down over the head of the Megazord. And it's got to be so careful because it's a very tight connection that we're going to deal with the shoulder clips at the moment. These also need to fold down. Um, such a tight connection here, you got to line this up perfectly. Um, the front horn needs to go in the mouth of the Dragon Zord, and... That went on so much better than I thought it would. I am so happy with how that turned out. Thank you, camera, for still recording. So once that's lined up, you want to fold this little clip down back into place where it was before, um, which should un it, it untabs it in the front here. So that all happens. You want to fold this up and hold that down. Um, once this tabs in place, you can rest the tail back up. Now... I'm going to come in here, fold out those shoulder clips. They're going to clip on either side through that groove section. I found that folding them down instead of trying to do this all at once is the best method, but these clips do not feel sturdy. I would have loved to see some kind of clip system that went around the, the Zord Builder shoulders, uh, maybe popping the arms off and then putting them back on. But that being said, now everything's tabbed in. Let's carefully add the legs back. So just got all this extra weight just added to it. Let's bring back the pterodactyl chest piece. everything's in place. Scoot them back. And, and, and there's the Mega Dragon Zord. All combined. Let me say this to start. Um, this is not stable. Because the Dragon Zord is about two and a half to three pounds. The Mega Zord is about two and a half to three pounds, give or take a, a half pound here or there. You are adding the whole weight of the Dragon Zord, all of its die cast parts, except for the little piece in the chest piece, is now just sitting on top of the Megazord. This is where the die cast causes a problem. And I love the die cast, it gives them a great feel of this is a high end toy. But this does not feel stable. These legs don't feel like they can support all this weight that's being pushed down on top of them. And I'm, in fact, not going to show this on the 2010 Megazord. Nah, nah, nah. We're going to put this on the 2010 Megazord. That should be interesting. But, with all things said, is this combination worth putting together? Sure. If you have Titanus and, and you put together the Ultra Zord. Which, like I see, Titanus isn't out yet. This is not how I'm displaying this Dragon Zord and this Megazord. They will be displayed separately or in fighting mode. I'm not displaying it like this because I don't trust this combination. It, like, legitimately feels unstable um, just in how... Just just because the Megazord... There we go. Right there. And that is the breaking point. Is that the Megazord's legs will give under the pressure. In fact, it leans forward a little bit and moving the arms up help um, these legs not connecting in to cause an issue. But, and this is where I'm going to say the original is better in this case, even though I like the way this one looks. This is a very sleek, uh, compact version of the Mega Dragon Zord. This is so much simpler, and it feels more sturdy. And this is partially because this thing doesn't have any die cast whatsoever. 
Um, but these shoulder clips, just clipping straight down, clamping down on his head, works so much better. This is supposedly a sturdier connection. There's more clips, more tabs. It stays together uh, better because if you turn this guy upside down, he'll fall off. Um, this guy won't move. But it just, because of the weight, it doesn't work as well. And I think an all plastic version of the Dragon Zord would be a great thing for the Mega Dragon Zord combination. I would be a little cautious when putting together the Mega Dragon Zord, as it will cause a very much a stable wreck here as stability. Like, this thing is, wow, that is hefty. So you got all that Tyrannosaurus die cast in there. This is an arm weight right here. Um, if you have a home invasion, slap this combination together and hit someone with it, because it'll hurt. Now, let's do the fun experiment of if the die-cast metal counterpart can't hold it very well, how well is the all-plastic version going to stand? Let's do this. You guys have no idea how unstable the thing is in front of you. So much so that I am worried because I'm not touching it right now. Slight movement here, and this thing is going to collapse. Look how much it's already leaning forward. And just how it squeaks. It, it, it's crying in pain because this this 2010 Megazord... Look at this. The arm is like disconnecting because of all the weight that is sitting on it. And here it is for f future record. Do not... If you, if you ever intend for your, your 2010 Megazord to be your Megazord in your collection... You don't want it to break or fall over ever. Never display it like this. Because this is the most unstable combination ever. Because you have like two and a half pounds of metal sitting on top of an all plastic thing that's not using that great quality plastic. This is scary. Especially if it were to fall from a shelf. So if you are going to be attempting the Mega Dragon Sword combination, either do it with the originals or with the legacy versions of both the Dragon Zord and the Megazord. And unless a all-plastic Dragon Zord comes out, do not try this with the 2010. Because um, I literally see the Triceratops splitting here at the pin connection. I'm going to disassemble this now, and, let's, and we'll take a final look at the Dragon Zord. Wow, this Dragon Zord does a lot of things. So, in conclusion, the combinations with the legacy Megazord and the Legacy Dragon Zord. The fighting mode works. It's a little complicated to get there with all the Dragon Zord transformation pieces. And the tail is over oversized and gigantic for a drill. But it works. It looks like it. It accomplishes everything. The Mega Dragon Zord combination, on the other hand, does look very good and quite impressive. But it is unstable. Um, I feel like maybe... When Legacy Titanus comes out, there there could be some something to lock the Megazord in, because I really don't feel like I would display the Ultra Zord um, comfortably if there wasn't something locking these legs into place, because these could just flip out from under itself uh, while in Titanus, and that whole thing could come crashing down. Um, so we'll see what happens with Legacy Titanus. Um, the giant open space on the original, I would I would like to see kind of gone away. Um, and, and added foot pegs to lock in the feet of the Megazord to make the Mega Dragon Zord inside Titanus to make the Ultra Zord a little more stable. And I give Bandai of America so much credit for designing a, a new Dragon Zord that's to be show accurate and combined with a figure they made four years prior. And it worked. It really did. And I really look forward to Legacy Titanus now. After seeing this Dragon Zord in hand, if Titanus is up to the same quality of paint apps, sculpting, and detail, then I, I will I will gladly buy one when it comes out. So other than that, uh, the only minor complaints I have with the Dragon Zord uh, I've gone over, but be careful when attaching so you don't have me with the scratched yellow paint that I have to fix uh, later on. But that being said, the Dragon Zord, Legacy Dragon Zord is highly recommended. Uh, you can get it at Toys R Us. has started releasing them now. Um, I got I had pre-ordered mine through ToysRust.com, which is why I got mine earlier than ToysRust.com putting them in stock. And you can pre-order from BigBadToyStore.com if you don't have a ToysRust store nearby you. And, whew, 
Be sure to check out HeroTaco.com for Power Rangers reviews, news, and more. Without further ado, stay tuned for more reviews of Legacy items. As, as far as I know, the next one I'm getting is Legacy Titanus. So, until next time, sound saying. Goodbye. <laughs>